Once you enter Destiny's beta, the first thing you do is choose a class. There are three classes to choose from. There's Titan, which uses heavy armor and heavy special attack. Then there's Hunter, which is stealth class and one hit special attacks. And finally, there's Warlock, which is the mage class and uses four special attacks. There's no need for explaining which weapons they'll be able to use, because no matter which class you pick, you're able to use the full arsenal of weapons, and there are a ton of weapons. After you choose your class, you now move on to making your character. Just like the classes, you have three races to choose from. You have Human, Awoken, and Exo. So all you do is pick your race, gender, and create your character. Now there isn't much to character creation, but then again, this is just the beta. Guardian? Eyes up, Guardian. It worked. You're alive. You don't know how long I've been looking for you. I'm a ghost. Actually, now I'm your ghost. And you... Well, you've been dead a long time. So you're gonna see a lot of things you won't understand. This is fallen territory. We aren't safe here. I have to get into the city. Hold it still. Don't worry, I'm still with you. We need to move. Fast. So here's the story. After being dead for two the centuries, the first thing you do is, well, obviously, find a bunch of enemies. And after you've killed your way to your new ship, the first thing your character says... Will it fly? Complete badass. I can make it work. Then you exit Star Wars style and then go off to fight for the universe. You come back for them when you're ready. Let's get you home. So if you've noticed back in the beginning, you leveled up. This is where you can look at your character's progress and loadouts. Not only that, but you also get to select your skills. Every time you level up, you get a new skill point. And since it's only the beta, you only can go up to level 8. But don't let that discourage you. Even going to level 8, you can still do a decent amount with your skills. And since you're just in the beginning of the game, your loadout is very basic. But once you get out there into the world and do missions, your loadout will get more advanced each time you progress. And when you get to level 8, you will earn new skills and abilities. You'll get better grenades, you'll be able to double jump or glide depending on which class you chose. You will also get a unique ability that will suit your class perfectly. Now on to the loadouts. As you progress, you will find or receive uncommon weapons. Uncommon weapons can also level up the more you use them. And just like your character, they also earn skills. But with uncommon weapons, you don't use skill points. You use Glimmer, Destiny's form of currency. And just like uncommon weapons, you can also find or receive uncommon armor. It also levels up the more you use it. And it also can earn skills as well. And just like uncommon weapons, you use Glimmer to purchase those skills. And down here is where you can change your ghost's skin layout as well as finding and buying new vehicles, or what I like to call them, speeders. You can also change the way your ship looks and change your emblem. Now on to the tower. Once you first land here, you instantly see the beauty in this place, and you just want to explore. Now the tower isn't just for exploring and looking at the surroundings, this is also where you can buy from weapons and armor to new vehicles and new ships. And this is also a place for social activity. You can meet up with friends and even make some in the process. And even though Destiny is not an MMO, it gives the illusion that it is. No matter where you go, you'll never be playing alone. Now on to the orbit. This is where you go to select your missions. Just select set destination. As you can see, this is the tower. But now we're gonna talk about the other planets. Let's start with Earth. Earth has five missions you can access, four story missions plus a co-op mission, the Devil's Pit, which requires teamwork because you are fighting groups of powerful enemies and a huge boss fight at the end. And if missions aren't really your thing, you can explore this awesome world as well. Now let's head over onto the Crucible. This is where you can join a competitive multiplayer. As of right now, the only game mode you can access is Control, but again, this is just the beta. Now, the moon. This is an awesome and mysterious place. The beta doesn't give us too much of it. You're only able to access one mission, but that mission alone gives you enough to see to just want to explore this eerie and beautiful planet. Now, the loading screens are by far enjoyable. 
Most loading screens are usually a blank background with the word loading, but Destiny, they do it with style. The loading screen for Destiny is your ship flying to its destination. But the multiplayer's loading screen is the most impressive. As you load up into a team, your ship takes off, and as your ship is flying, your teammate's ships fly right up with you, while some epic music is playing in the background, giving you this awesome feeling of pure badassery. Now the missions. That's where the game really shines. Unlike most games, I don't have fun replaying missions, but Destiny, I can't explain it. It could be that there isn't much right now, so I'm enjoying the missions I have, or they're just really fun. Each mission I replayed over and over again, and I enjoyed every moment of it. The one thing about each mission is the variety each of them have. One minute you're gathering intel, then you're fighting groups of enemies, then you have to explore abandoned buildings which are infested with enemies, and other missions have you travel great distances to reach your destination. And one minute you're just fighting basic enemies, and then waves of powerful enemies come out of nowhere. The missions always keep you hooked in. No matter where, from Earth to the Moon, the missions are always intense, with its dialogue to its combat. The missions on the Moon felt like as if Ridley Scott made them himself, from the enemies coming from the darkness to the backgrounds and the eerie abandoned locations. It's just completely thrilling. Now, the Devil's Pit. Like I said before, the key to victory in this mission is teamwork. No matter what, you'll always be partnered up with two other players, or two of your friends. This is not a mission that can be played alone. Once you spawn in, you're in the district area of this world, and it's crawling with enemies. No matter where you look, there's enemies. And as you work your way through the district, you have to fight your way through abandoned buildings. And as you travel on, you and your team will finally arrive at the Devil's Pit, where you will fight Sepike's Prime, the boss of the Devil's Pit. And it's not an easy task, because it's strong. And not only that, but you have relentless waves of enemies coming at you from every corner. But once you and your team triumph and defeat Sepike's Prime, and the way he implodes is simply epic and the victory is so satisfying. Now multiplayer. I'm not a huge fan of competitive gaming, but I do enjoy it and I really enjoyed Destiny's multiplayer. It was fun, fast paced, challenging, and just exciting to play. Now the game mode we're able to play is Control. If you played Halo, Battlefield, or Call of Duty, you'll be very familiar with this game mode. Each team has to take control of each station A, B, and C. And whichever team gets their bar higher than the others first, or before the time runs out, is the victor. Now the multiplayer can be frustrating at points, because instead of having pre-game loadouts, you use the ones you've made in the campaign. Now it's not a bad thing, but it's also not a good thing, because there are weapons that are seriously overpowered. Even though other games have done this as well, Destiny is different, because as long as you have a more powerful weapon than anyone else, you will always be on top. It's just one problem which may be fixed in the future, I hope, because the multiplayer is really enjoyable, but higher level players with higher leveled weapons can ruin the enjoyment. Now the public events. As of right now, the only ones I've seen were Defeat Extraction Cores, Walker Destroyed, and Enemy Takedown. I'm not sure if these are the only ones, or will there be more when the full game is released. Nonetheless, they're still very enjoyable. Now Enemy Takedown is very basic. You have one enemy you must take down. Now it won't be that easy of a task, because the enemy you'll be taking down is very powerful. And Extraction Cores, that's pretty easy, but very fun. There will be three Extraction Cores laid out, and you must destroy each one at a certain time. Time. But the only way to destroy them is you'll have to defeat three waves of enemies before the time runs out. And once you finish the first one, you'll have to do it two more times. Then there's Walker Destroyed, which sounds simple, mainly because it is. But it's extremely difficult, because the Walker is this big freaking tank that's very powerful and extremely strong. This one definitely needs to be done with teamwork to take this thing down. Exploration. Now this is where you can view the beauty of this game. Even though everything is destroyed and abandoned, it still has that sense of life. I haven't felt that in a game since Fallout 3. Just by looking at this world, you can sense the craftsmanship these developers put in this game. This is something I haven't seen in a while. And I'm glad that there are still game developers out there that bring their art and passion for games, instead of just wanting to make a quick buck. As you explore, you'll find chests for looting and dead ghosts for intel. It's a pretty big world. You'll be traveling through hills, canyons, caves, to abandoned buildings, and it's just enjoyable. I spent many hours just exploring and looking at the amazing scenery. It's just epic. Well, that about does it for this review. 
uh, I give it a 7.5. Uh, well, that's my review and rating. Um, I'll most likely will be reviewing um, the full game when it comes out. Uh, it'll probably be a while after it releases. Um, this is actually my first review, and I'm kind of happy about it. Uh, but anyways, um, please like, comment, subscribe, and I uh, hope you enjoyed.